All right, hey everyone, and welcome to my tryout cast for the IPL casting job that has recently gone up on a Reddit post by Josh Sith. Uh, big shout out to IPL for giving casters a chance to become involved in the big leagues. Uh, it's very hard for upcoming casters such as myself and others to get involved. And uh, I am Nick Poke Bunny Tabor, a professional player, in fact, for Team It's Gosu. Uh, also been getting into casting a lot recently, and I hope to. Uh, spread my casting and do more casting in the future so I hope you enjoy this cast and I hope I can get this job uh, we're gonna be opening up here a TVP on Metropolis one of the newer GSL maps also of course utilized in IPL uh, between Liquid Tasia over here is the Red Terran in the bottom position and Complexity Killer over here in the blue Paradox on top uh, these players both Korean players recently joining foreign teams getting more exposure in the international scene. Uh, Complexity and Liquid, of course, very big uh, kind of media giants. They do a very good job of promoting their players, uh, and as such, these players have gotten a lot more attention as of late. Teja, you know, doing very well in the GSL lately, reaching all the way to the round of eight in Code S, uh, and as well as continuing to stomp his home ground of the originally ESV tournament. Originally IC Cup tournament, now ESV tournament. Uh, Killer not having quite as much success lately, falling at MLG relatively early in the open bracket compared to some of his Korean compatriots. But uh, certainly a solid top level Protoss as well. Uh, we're going to have a game in cross positions on Metropolis. Metropolis is a really large map. Uh, it's definitely produced a lot of drawn out macro games. It's very easy to go up to three, five bases. At that point, it becomes a little more difficult to take additional bases, but we do see a lot of high-tech macro wars coming out in all matchups. We do have Killer actually sending out quite an early scout on 9 Supply, getting a full scout of Tasia's base and doing a little bit of harass. Not too much weird stuff going on from either player. We have a barracks and gas down for Tasia, which I suppose is a little strange considering we often see a gas expand on maps as big as this, or even a CC first. Uh, Killer, of course, going for the one gas and the cyber core. Nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, in fact, he's actually going to be blocking off this add-on here with a pylon. He's not only using this to block a potential add-on, but also for a little bit ad additional scouting info. You know, if you know that there's no add-on placed down right away, you know that there's not an early Reaper coming out, you know that there's no early Marauder. Uh, you know, this pylon just gives you a little more scouting info. I'm actually surprised that he did indeed let that pylon finish. Uh, letting the pylon finish is a little bit of a mistake, I feel. Uh, just because he's already delayed the add-on enough to get the necessary scouting info. But, you know, letting that finish certainly gives you a little more chance to see what's going on. You know, he saw that three marines had come out already, as well as a fourth on the way. While Tasia has, of course, put up a factory. That's pretty much the only other option you have with your gas if you get add-on blocked like he did. Uh, Teja also putting up a second gas, so it looks like he'll definitely be teching up to some sort of possibly Cloak Banshees or Raven. You know, there, there are quite a few options still for Teja, but it's definitely some kind of Starport tech, as we can see the Starport getting laid down right here. Over here on Killer side, we have no second gas. Chrono boosting out probes, looks to be going for the one gate expand. Uh, only a Zealot and a Stalker. Excuse me, actually it was just a Stalker. I thought I saw a Zealot, but I was completely incorrect. So we do just have a Stalker expand coming out here from Killer. Uh, immediately actually following this up with a second and third gateway here. Uh, possibly planning to lay down some pressure, possibly just being defensive, also getting out of sentry. Uh, not, not, not too unique of an opening. Definitely a very standard opening we see from Protoss players these days. Tasia has now lifted his Starport over to that tech lab created by the factory and began researching Cloak. Cloak openings not quite as common as they used to be a few months ago when we really saw 111 becoming super popular, uh, but they are still certainly very strong. Uh, this Tasha still has a lot of options from this point. He could be going for a Cloak Expand, he could be going for a 111 all-in of course, but uh, given that there is no reactor on this barracks that he's cut marine production, I would guess that he's going to expand and transition into standard bio play. Killer, meanwhile, has put down that second gas and a robotics facility, so he is going to be relatively safe from his cloak play, although I think cloak is definitely going to finish before that first observer gets out from the robotics. 
so the Banshee might be able to do a little bit of damage here. Just a couple sentries and a Stalker out on the map from Killer. Using the Stalker to poke at the Marines, keep them from getting too much scouting information or pushing across the map. Uh, Banshee out and actually is seen by Killer's probe as it moves across the map. So Killer will be definitely prepared for this with multiple Stalkers warping in, and he'll be chrono boosting that Observer out as soon as possible. Tasha's expansion is certainly a little bit behind Killers, but you know, if he can get a few probe kills with the Banshee, he will definitely be in great shape. As we take a look at the income tab, we do have a slight advantage on the Harvesters for Killer. And of course, with no second orbital up for Tasia yet at this point, he is definitely at a slight economic is disadvantage. Banshee moving in with Cloak, gonna be getting a couple probe kills, but the Observer is just about to pop out. Popping out here right now, and this Banshee is in a bit of trouble, actually manages to escape the Observer and get one more probe kill on its way out, evening up the worker count a little bit more. Back in Tasia's base, we have a reactor going down on that barracks, uh, as well as a tech lab on the factory, interestingly enough. Uh, he's continuing to produce Banshees, has two already out on the map, and adding a third as well. A little bit of an interesting play from Tasia. he's actually thrown down a third orbital as well. This is a very unique build that I haven't actually quite seen much myself. You know, usually we see people who open the Cloak Span try to transition a little bit faster, maybe get a Raven to support their bio, uh, but this is definitely a unique play from Tasia. Tasia continuing to do a little bit of harass with these Banshees, uh, poking at the sentries. No additional barracks have been added yet, and he actually does have this factory here producing siege tanks, so we may see a little bit of non-standard composition here from Tasia. He could continue with this 1-1-1 style play, uh, adding on more barracks and factories and starports, perhaps. Uh, we do have a Raven coming out for Tasia. The Raven is really great with a build like this, just because, especially if you're going into a macro style, there's a lot of chance for that Raven to build up energy. Uh, you can ward off Observers, as we can see here. There's an Observer hovering over Tasia's natural. The Observer has gotten a lot of good scouting information, however, as we take a look at Killer's vision. Uh, he has scouted the factory with the Tech Lab, and the Starport continuing to produce Tech Lab units. Raven out is going to be able to drive this observer away. Tasia, I'm surprised to see that he hasn't put up additional gases a little bit earlier. With constant production out of this factory in Starport, I would think that he would want to get a little bit of a gas stockpile to produce more effectively these high-tech units. A pair of forges going down for Killer, along with a robotics bay here in the main. We will be seeing Colossus production rather shortly. Uh, Colossi are an interesting choice against this sort of composition. They're good because they you know, obviously do a great job at tearing apart Marines, and keeping that Marine count low is going to be key for Killer's ability to take out these tech units. But at the same time, the Colossus are quite vulnerable to these Banshees. Not only are they air units that the Colossus can't shoot, but getting those Colossi gives you a little less flexibility in dealing with Banshee harassment. You know, it gives you a little more weakness on the ground, uh, as well as, you know, that gas could be otherwise spent on a Twilight Council, perhaps, for Blink, or even High Templar for feedback on these Banshees. So, he will be a little bit weak to the Banshee harass, and I'll be interested to see how that works out for Tasia throughout this game, because that definitely could play uh, a large role in determining the outcome of this game. Stalker's moving out across the map, Grabbing this watchtower, not a whole lot of action on either side at this point, both content to just build up on their three bases, the third almost complete for Killer. Four Banshees are moving into the main, take out a couple Stalkers on the way, but a Photon Cannon is able to push them back. More Stalkers being warped in and brought over, uh, but it looks like Killer is in a little bit of trouble, having to transfer all his probes away from the main, uh, and taking quite a bit of damage from these Banshees. Nothing too important being taken down, but you know, every little bit of damage counts when he's not actually losing any Banshees. And just as I say that, one Banshee falls, Tasia, small lapse of attention there, losing a little bit. Not too much of a big deal, but you know, every little bit counts in a game as high level as this. Tasia banking up quite a bit of, of minerals, adding a bunch of barracks on, he definitely seems to be moving into full-on bioproduction. Interesting style from Tasia here, uh, getting these tanks perhaps just to defend from the possibility of a Colossus based all-in, uh, as well as secure, you know, the safety of this third orbital. Third orbital finally is going to be moving over to the third base here for Tasia. Definitely needed at, at this point. He has up to 60 workers, which is about the maximum you can support on two bases. We take a look at the unit count, uh, not really too many units on the field for either side, you know, both are very content to tech up, 
get their upgrades and infrastructure going before doing any major attacks. Uh, Teja with a slight supply advantage, even though he is down in the worker count, so his army is definitely a little bit larger here, but Killer is not in any sort of trouble as he has the Templar Archives, Colossus Tech, Charge on the way, as well as 2-2, so he's definitely set himself up to be in a fine position going for the mid-game. Teja also beginning his upgrades over here. He does have the plus one already on the bio, beginning the 2-1 and the plus one for the Vikings. Uh, so he definitely plans to be making a lot of these Vikings to counter the Colossi, of course. Uh, plus one is a very cost-efficient upgrade, costing only 100-100 and giving a significant damage boost on these air units. Teja actually doing a bit of an interesting maneuver here, moving out with his main army of Marine Marauder Medivac to the middle of the map, while moving these Banshees, Vikings, and Raven around the the left side. He might be looking to pick off an observer and use the cloak to get a lot of damage done with these banshees. Uh, and that is exactly what's happening here. Vikings moving in to pick off the observer, doing a very good job as his bio drives out units from these watchtower, maybe looking to pressure the third. A very nice, interesting move by Tejan here. Bio units moving up. Not committing to any frontal attack as these Colossi are in good position and with four seals he can't really engage those Colossi without the Vikings and Banshees for support. Interestingly enough, Killer actually only has one center here with his main army. That's all that there is on the map. Uh, he is beginning to add High Templar though, which will definitely make his army stronger against that bio, but his army does still look a little bit fragile. Without those four seals, he can't really zone out the Terran army and create the position that he wants. And especially with such a large force of bio, along with these Banshees and Vikings, you know, that's definitely a danger for Killer. Teja seems content to stay on three bases for quite a while. He does have this fourth orbital in the main, but has not made any moves with it. Uh, not planning to move it over to any bases anytime soon. I'd be interested to see if he takes the island in this game. Considering his large air strike force built up, that would definitely be a quite strong move for him in this game if he did choose to utilize that, and it's very hard for the Kurdoff to deal with. Uh, small drop moving in along with this air support force. Feedback's actually taking out a couple of key units for Teja, a Banshee and a Viking, uh, excuse me, a Banshee and a Raven did go down. Uh, the tanks for Teja are running in for a bit of scouting. I guess he just decided he didn't need them or they weren't worth the supply at this point in the game. Uh, we, we don't often see tanks integrated into a composition such as this in TVP, so, you know, it also is harder to control, perhaps just a bit inconvenient to have around. Uh, looks like a big engagement is going to be happening here. Banshees and Vikings doing a lot of work on the Colossi. The Templar are not quite part of the battle yet, uh, but some good storms will go down here. One storm going down. No more storms. There's another storm. Feedback on the Medivacs as well. Very nicely done by Killer. Pushing back Tasia, evening up the supplies and taking a slight lead. No more storms are available for Killer, though, so he is going to have to back off here. Actually, he's in a bit of a dangerous position. This Watchtower Marine has spotted the exact size of Killer's army, so he's definitely aware of what he's going up against. And uh, Killer, after what looked like a great fight for him, is going to have to back off. He is putting down a fourth base here. It is finished over here with this Nexus completed, but no probes yet mining. Robotics Bay, in fact, upgrading Warp Prism speed here, so we will definitely be seeing some Warp Prism harassment going up for Killer. Definitely a very strong tactic in the late game TVP these days. Uh, you know, the Warp Prisms really help deny those Terran expansions from mining effectively. Teja actually taking a bit of an interesting base as his fourth over here on the right. Uh, in fact, taking the base closer to his opponent rather than expanding over on the left. He is actually now putting down a CC on the left. As he drops the fourth here for Killer, all these Zealots are going to be cancelled as they warp in. Uh, Bio should be evacuated momentarily uh, as a large force from Killer comes to clean it up. Blink may be able to pick off a couple of these medivacs. One does go down full of units, but uh, the others look... Oh, no! The other one will go down also full of units. Supplies are relatively even. Upgrades for Killer sitting at 2-2 with 3-3 on the way. For Tasia, he is at 2-1 with 2-2 almost complete and plus three attack on the way. So everything is relatively even in this game still. Uh, and we should be going into a fairly stable late game scenario. Colossus still in production for Killer. He does only have two on the map right now, but quite a few Templar and Archons as well. In fact, 
up to eight Templar, as well as three or four Archons. I feel like in a straight up engagement, these Templar will be extremely effective because Tage's ghost count is a bit limited, only with four ghosts on the map. He really wants more like eight or ten to really properly blanket this army in EMPs. And uh, that, that's definitely a key to these late game battles for Terran, is you really need to have good control of those ghosts, getting EMPs down on all the key units. More gateways going up for Killer, very smart move. You know, as a Protoss in the late game, you really want to be making as many extra gateways as you can afford to quickly reinforce as soon as a battle happens. One of the huge advantages Protoss has in these late game scenarios is that they can reinforce faster than any other race due to their instant production warp gates. Warp Prism being loaded up with four High Templar, in fact, moving around the left side of the map. I'm not sure if we'll see a Storm Drop here, or if he plans to use this with his main army. We have been seeing a lot of Warp Prism Storm play in GSL lately, both for harassment and with the main army, just to protect the Templar from EMPs. Looks like with the position of this Warp Prism, he will be going for a Storm Drop, although there aren't too many SCVs over here, mostly using mules to mine at this Planetary Fortress. Uh, interested to see if Killer does go for the drop or chooses to back away. Army's maneuvering around the middle of the map a lot. Uh, neither one really looking to commit to a big battle. Tasia does have a slightly higher ghost count as well as more energy built up on those ghosts, so he might be in a bit of a better position than he was before should an engagement happen. But there are still four full energy Templar here on the field. Uh, sizable number of Vikings, a pretty good number considering the amount of Colossi from Killer. Uh, he could possibly want a few more, but it's definitely enough to handle these Colossi. Oh, Tasia looks to be moving up with Cloak Ghosts! EMP's going down all over the Templar, and the Viking's in a great position. High Templar in the Warp Prism, gonna be dropped very soon. But it looks like he actually just forgot about those, and that's gonna go down without doing any damage. Poor control from Killer in this battle, and his army is just evaporating after being unable to get any storms down. All the Colossi fall, the Bio Ball moves into the natural at high speed. Warp gates for Killer all are all up, but he is not warping in a whole lot. Ten High Templar are being warped in somewhere over here on the right. Uh, looks like he's just going to give up this main and try to turtle the, the side bases here. There's not a whole lot he can do to survive at this point. This is going to be just about it for Killer. I can't see any way he can come back in this game. Tage's army is boldly upgraded, you know, fully tacked out, and GG comes out from Killer. A very well played game by both players. Killer really only messing up in the final engagement. That was the kind of the key to that match. He was always slightly behind throughout the game in the supply. You know, Teja always seemed to have a little bit of an edge as far as map control goes, being able to do all those drops, etc. Uh, he, was, he was very on top of everything from Killer. Uh, a very well played game by Teja. Uh, really showing how his mechanics can outplay even top Korean players. You know, being a ladder beast that he is, most of his play, most of his gameplay relies on those top tier mechanics. So, a very well played game by Tasha, And that's going to do it for this replay cast for the IPL 5 tryout. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I can do more casts in the future, and I hope I get the job. Thanks a bunch for listening, and see you later.